I'd like to give a big shout out to the Hoodoo Gurus who have given us permission to use part of their song, That's My Team, as our new podcast episode intro for all of their music. And whenever they are going live or performing live, head to their Facebook and their Instagram. The links will be in the description below. Be sure to give them a like and a follow as well on Facebook and Instagram. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Final Tackle Podcast and I'm actually joined by someone who I've actually had a goal to have on the podcast since I started because he is the GOAT, his name is Jeremy Lattimore. Uh, first of all, cheers for joining us and how are you going today? Yeah, not too bad, thanks for having me on. No, I'm not too bad, uh, had a few beers Saturday night actually so I'm still struggling today, I haven't <laughs> got much fat match fitness at the moment so um, coming into work after that, that's a bit of a challenge but no, all good, went and trained early this morning so that helps sweat it out a bit yeah it would it would definitely um so i mean let's get stuck into it first of all for everyone listening can you tell us about the origin of your nickname goat which is obviously to anyone who doesn't know is an abbreviation for greatest of all time yeah no, that's, uh, definitely not doing me playing ability it was a bit <laughs> of a um De- uh, dean at the uh nro roast he obviously started that uh back mm-hmm. in was it like, might have been last year? No, when did Cam Smith thing happen? The year before. So yeah. I think it was around the Cam Smith incident. Oh, when Cam incident. Smith got, got sin bin? Yeah, when I was um, trying to play the ball and I, I clipped him on the nuts and he, oh. he went over and then Cam McGuinness scored a try when we played Melbourne. That's right, yep. Yeah, so I think that, that was partly to do with it. And then he, um, I, I don't know if he filming incidents in Bali when I was over there on the drink and getting a bit loose. So I think he liked that as well. So a couple of them incidents sort of le- led to the moniker, I think. Yeah, and well, I mean, definitely kept, kept running it. Well, I mean, for sure. And I think it's just more or less a staple now. Everyone associates the like nickname Goat. And what are your thoughts on being called Goat and, you know, the Goat? Do you take it in your stride now? And what was it yeah, like when you, when you first found out that everyone was calling you, you know, Goat or the Goat sort of thing? Yeah, mate. Look, I just, I'm a pretty easy going guy, so yep. I just roll with whatever. Um, just a bit of a laugh and, um, you know, it sort of helped grow my, uh, get, get me name out there. Yeah, for the sure. last few years of my career, which um, I still always say thanks to Dean for that. But, um, you know, it's uh, a, a bit of fun, so it's all good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if Dean, Dean, if you're listening to the podcast... Jeremy says thanks. Um, so <laughs> l- let's focus a bit about your career, obviously. Um, you debuted for the Eels in 2009, um, but I read somewhere, I may be wrong because obviously I did research, but everywhere, I don't believe everything you read. Obviously, you debuted for the Eels, but you signed for the Sharks when you were still living in um, Port Macquarie, you know, before you got your first grade. Um, and if that is how it happened, um, what was the go when you... Because you signed for the Eels and then played for them, or did you sign for the Sharks and then didn't get game time, so the Eels offered you a chance sort of thing? No, no. So when I was still a kid growing up in Port Macquarie, that, that's where I got signed by Cronulla Sharks. So okay. they signed me when I was 17 because I, I used to go to some of the uh, school holiday camps I had with yep. Andrew Fox, who mm-hmm. is from Port Macquarie as well. He used to be in their um, like junior rep program, was signed from a young age, and he got me a start there. And I played um, the Jersey flag and reserve grade there for a couple of years. And then I um, popped my shoulder. I had to get a shoulder ego and Parramatta come in and um, offered me a two year deal there. So moved across there and um, yeah, so I, I played two years of low grades there, lived with Jimmy Maloney the first couple of years there and won um, two reserve grade comps in 07 and 08. One was with Parra then the other was with Wentworth Phil. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, obviously got a crack in 2009 and obviously that was a pretty good year for Parramatta and yeah, obviously did. It was a great year for them. I mean, unfortunate ending, but still a great year regardless, you know. So just where the club came from, you know, I think it was about round, well, I debuted 11 and then I think it was about round 16 or 17, I think like way That's outside the top eight. Yeah, and then yeah. Hainsey just went on a run of form, which, you know, <laughs> It's still spoken about today and will be for a long time and won the Dally M and carried like, the team. Obviously, there were some boys on the team who were playing really good footy, but Jared was untouchable. For sure. Um, honestly, yeah, the 2009 um, uh, Eels, honestly, reg- regardless that the loss of the grand final, they still made it given that they were more or less down and out, as you said, around round 11. And then they did the unthinkable, you know, pulled off the unthinkable and got to the grand final. So... 
big big ups first of all to you and the eels for the 2009 year um yeah now wow um so everyone who's listening if you read that on wikipedia or the website he did sign with the sharks first but <laughs> obviously popped his shoulder and whatnot um now you're you spent a bit of time at different clubs um you know the dragons the sharks the panthers which club did you feel the most at home and which club did you feel like maybe if you'd have stayed a bit longer you could have you know accomplished more potentially yeah look i think um my time at Penrith was where I sort of really established myself and mm. um, too lucky. I my mean, first year there, I got injured and snapped um, my ankle, so I had to get surgery. And then, yeah, 2014, I went on to play. I missed two games through suspension mm-hmm. and then we, we made the preliminary final. So that that was like my first, that year Thanks I felt like I, I could re- yeah, re- really like, like dominant, not dominated, but just belonged in first well, I mean, grade. And, I know I started paying attention to your name in the NRL when you were playing for Penrith. Yeah, so that that, that was sort of where I come. You know, like before that, I was in and out of first grade. I was inconsistent and um, at, at the Warriors and Parramatta, and then sorry, I was with Dragons in 2012. Like, and I started the year really well there, but um, I just wasn't consistent enough. So, 2014, I finally worked it out, and because I'm not a player who who was a um, you know, I didn't dominate football games or anything, so I needed to be at my best every week to hold my position. And yeah. um, that that was 2014 where that sort of happened. And 15, I played every game. And 16, there was a change of coaches, and Anthony Griffin come along, and um, you know, he he, he gave me opportunities to put, like start and stuff. But I just, yeah, I I, I, I don't know. Like under Ivan, I, I really, I don't know. He, he got he brought the best out of me. Whereas under Hook, I didn't. I don't know, it didn't suit the way he wanted to play. And Lilani Lalatu and players come through were playing really well. So I sort of fell down the pecking order, which is part of footy. And, um, yeah, so I still had another year to go there. But um, the writing was on the wall, so I got a release and went down to Cronulla. And, um, and you then eventually talk- got to play for Cronulla. Yeah, it ended up happening, and um, there then I ended up back at the Dragons. So de- definitely, sort of Penrith and Dragons are the two clubs where I felt like I um, really established myself and played some really good um, footy. Yeah, and, and you um, played some really good footy in your last two seasons in general with the Dragons. Like, granted, obviously the Dragons the last few years haven't been crash hot, but they have had um, minus this year had a really good start to the 2018 season. I think they went like 13 and 0. You know, um, you know, and all that in 2019 season wasn't too great, but they still had you know really good wins when they did win. And yeah, like like you were saying, you really hit your form towards the end, towards the back end of your career, really with um, Penrith and the Dragons. Yeah, I think I think you know the NRL was hard, and um, oh. yeah, just that consistency and um, being able to do it every week. And I don't know, I don't know mentally, I was immature. Well. I I forget how it was, but in terms of my prep for games and yeah. ha- being in the right place mentally, um, I think just through consistency and doing it week in, week out, I, I developed that. And um, yeah, that, yeah. so I, I felt like the last few years, I, I definitely had a lot of fun and um, it worked out the uh, game of the NRL. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and <coughs> that. Um, which club was the toughest to go up against for you mentally? And which club was the toughest for you to go up against physically during your time in the NRL? Yeah, gee, I don't know. Good question. Um, probably, I'd say the Roosters mm. were, were always a team who, oh, God, I don't know. But they've obviously been yeah, high-performing for the last few years and even 2013, but mm-hmm. they've got guys in that team who you just knew were, were going to be physical and you yeah, mentally like had to be H sort of thing. Yeah, Takiaho, uh, Boyd Cordner. Yeah. Um, but actually, you know, like thinking about it, like mentally, uh, I think you're up for them sort of games. And I don't know, like team like Canberra, I've always, whenever I play Canberra, I always got bumped and bruised and okay. be carrying injuries the next week after playing them. But yeah, Roosters, I think mentally you're physically just ready to go, but yeah, you, you, you're always up for it. And at the Dragons, a couple of them games or the Anzac Day games. Oh, so yeah, the Anzac Day they're, games. They're bloody great games to play and easy to get up for. Um, but yeah, probably the physicality of the Roosters. Mm-hmm. No, that's fair. Um, and if we're going individually, 
who was the toughest player for you to go up against mentally and who was the toughest player for you to go like individual player to go up against physically for you like which player not necessarily did you hate going up against but what player were you always like ah oh, shit i got him this week sort of thing yeah probably hargraves like yeah. he i've got a couple of burners from just his all elbows and knees and um He's just hard, he's hard to tackle. He uses his body really well. Always mm-hmm. finds his front. Um, he, he, yeah, he's a really physical player. But then someone like Jason Tomalolo, who mm-hmm. obviously has that physicality, but at the same time he's um, got the full footwork of a mm-hmm. you know a winger or something, and yes. the speed of a winger. He, he's uh, he's a complete athlete. No, that's fair. Um, now, going through a few fun questions, um, what would be your beer of choice at the moment and, and or what is your beer of choice? Probably, I love the old Great Northerns. They're, um, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're easy to drink, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I went through, I think, about six last night. I was at my neighbours watching the footy and literally I didn't even realise I was six deep until the six-pack was empty. So, yeah, no. Yeah, no, they're good. Um, how do you like your steak? That is if you're a steak person. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, probably medium rare. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? <sighs> Seeing in, being able to see day into the future, just okay. so I could, just for punting, like punting. <laughs> yep, yep. Stock market, um, uh, yep. just know, knowing what's coming in terms of that. that. Yeah, yeah, so not necessarily the whole future or anything, but literally just a day ahead. Just, just being able to have the ability to see a day ahead so that you can see, you know, you'd be set anyway. That's all you need to see. You would really, you only need to see a day ahead, yeah. Far out. Honestly, that's the best answer. I've had, you know, flight, I've had people say visibility, but just a day ahead. That Honestly, yeah. that's so yeah. great. Um, how are you settling into life after footy, considering obviously you're a relatively new retiree? Yeah, look, it's, it's um, obviously, you know, it's had its challenges with everything going on in the, the world with coronavirus and mm-hmm. um, mentally you go from, you know, playing rugby league, training every day into sort of work life where it's just, it's just steady in terms of, um, say, rugby league where you're up and down, you're up and down, depending if you're winning, losing, um, for tired, like cold, like training and all that. So it's definitely a lot more steady and had its challenges, but mate, I, I know I've made the right decision. Like I, I couldn't think of anything worse being at training now and oh. getting flogged and getting bashed on a weekend. Um, it's, uh, and, and even with the rule changes, I think the game looks so so much faster. I was so, about to say, um, with the rule changes, that's a good talking point because I was going to bring that up. What are your thoughts on, obviously, because you played, you only ever played in the first grade when it was two refs because 09, they brought in the two refs rule and system. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and obviously, junior levels like Canterbury Cup and whatnot is, and, or Toyota Cup and whatnot, as it was called back then, is one ref. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the six again rule and also the um, one ref on the field again? Because like you said, it's so much more faster paced. I, I'd like to hear it from like, you know, a bloke who was there up until they brought in the changes really sort of thing. Well, I think it's definitely changed the dynamic of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, like you, you play as, and you look at Victor Radley and Cam Murray, even Tom Ola because he's got a big engine. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, them sort of players who can play big minutes and um, just they're not getting the numbers into the tackles now like they were. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's because of the six again rule or there's not another ref behind the ruck like talking and saying things. Um, but I, I, I actually really like what they've done with the game and I, I, I feel too. like Peter Volandis has just come in and he's got Midas touch at the moment. Everything he's touching is turned into gold. Straight and up. He's, um, yeah, he's, he's just the leadership he's shown throughout the whole pandemic and you know, obviously, he what was an ideal situation. Then he got rid of Greenberg, but he, he's he's de- definitely one of, of of like of the up until two thousand and seven sort of times when it was a bit more flowing. It's definitely brought it back, you know. And people were always saying, oh, "It's two stop start. It's two stop start." And this has more or less solved that issue. What are your thoughts? Do you, do you think that you'd agree with that? Yeah, totally. And then even like I felt like last year, every week or every second week, they'd be whinging about the jobs the referee yeah. had done or how yep. many mistakes the referee made. No, I can't remember the last time there was an article in the paper about the refs making a mistake. Exactly. So it sort of took the heat off them a little bit. Which, did, especially um, with the captain's challenge this year as well, that's also helped. 
and that and that puts the ownership back on the players. You know, mm. if you want to challenge something, you can challenge it. But if you get it wrong, well, you, you've That's lost the you. opportunity yeah. to possibly do it later in the game when it might be more needed. So exactly. I, yeah, I, I think yeah, it's it's been unreal. And yeah, you talk about the flow of the game. It's just yeah, it's sharp. It's fast. It's at the ruck and. Um, you know, you look at a team like the Roosters. I, I guess I'll coming off being in England, back, you know, one back uh, back to back competitions, mm. and they really started the year slow, but then they've gone away for eight weeks, nine weeks, come back, and they're they're just unbelievable, mate. They, they just really are rolling rolling the rock, and you know they haven't lost a game since they've been back into it. And, I don't know when they rule again. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know either. Um, because obviously, as you know, this week they, def- I think it was this week they defeated the Dragons, or it was the week yeah. before. Yeah, this yeah, week- no, yeah, it's Friday. Yeah. yeah, 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 Friday they defeated the Dragons, <laughs> who played for la- last year. And speaking of the Dragons, what are your thoughts on their season so far for the Dragons? It's not been an ideal restart for them, and not even really an ideal start before that this year. What are your thoughts that maybe things? What things do you think they could do differently? Um or change sort of aspects um, to improve their game, do you think? Mate, honestly, so they beat um, Cronulla and then yep. they beat Titans. And I, I felt like when, when they moved Benny to the bench and... Um, I, I love he, that. Like, that was such yeah. a good dynamic. Well, I, honestly, yeah. So when he comes on and Cam goes to 13 and, like, you talk about the flow of games and, you know, then, then players I was talking about before with that sort of body shape, Cam's got that sort of body shape. So he goes to 13. He's as strong as an ox. He's got good leg speed. And then Benny's, you know, he's playing really well at dummy half. And, mm-hmm. you know, Clooney and Normie are in the halves doing a good job. But, you know, Duff's coming into his own there. So I just feel if the boys can um, sort of compete like they did on the weekend and mm-hmm. go after it. But, but like, you know, I was talking about getting yourself up for them sort of games yeah. against the Roosters. They're easier. So the challenge is now, you know, they've got to do that this week and then next week. And um, I, I feel like if they can do that, they're going to give themselves a um, much better chance to win their the football game, yeah. and um, but yeah, like a, it was not an ideal start at all. Like round oh, one, though, the Broncos who I follow have definitely not had the best restart. <laughs> no, they haven't because they played actually really well in rounds one and two. But and you know, they maybe did, they're yeah. not suited to the rule changes. And I don't think they uh, are any, at least yet anyway. But they've, got, they've got a lot of young players too, they which I, I feel you just can't put to all your eggs in the basket with mm. the uh, young players. You need to have a mix of uh, the senior players there. Exactly. Uh, they know, don't pe- have enough senior players, which is, I think, one of the good reasons why they bought, literally two weeks ago, Isaac Luke. Um, mm. You know? But, like, Josh Josh McGuire, you know, if he's there, he, he's, just, he's a mongrel. He mm. goes after it. And, um, you know, they're, they're really missing someone like him in the middle of the field. A oh, 100% they are. You know, like, it's all good and well to say, you know, oh, but we've got the ages of Alex Glenn. We've got... Um, Boyd in the backs for the age, you know, and all that. But it's like, yeah, but like you said, they're not someone that's intense like Josh Maguire or yeah. JWH, you know. Like, granted, yeah, they've they've been playing for years, but yeah, they don't have that, okay, boys, follow me. This is the mongrel thing to do. Well, not mongrel, but yeah, you know what I mean? Well, like, I'll, and like I was talking about myself, with that consistency early in your career, and I, I feel, you know, they've got a lot of young players who, who still have, aren't at that point where they play well week in, week out. Mm-hmm. And that's with, with the older boys, you know, you get that. You know what Josh McGuire is going to do every week and yeah. Jared Hargo is going to do every week. So they're, they're missing that at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's going to be, could be a rough year for them, but then everyone's going to get this, this experience this year and then next year, you know, hopefully they develop that consistency. And they'll actually have a pre-season to work with it and everything as well. Yeah, and because they do have a lot of talented players, but yeah, they just they they, they need to get that mix right. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> what do you think you'd be doing now if you hadn't have had a first grade career? Yeah, I don't know. I was um I was only talking to someone about this recently. Like, obviously, grew up in Port Macquarie. Mm-hmm. Uh, had no idea what I wanted to do. I'd finished my HSC and do you? Yeah, I, I was you know I want to play footy. I, I wasn't handy, so I wouldn't have been doing a trade or anything. So. Mm-hmm. And uni, uni wasn't honestly on my radar back then, so I, I don't know. I, I, I did a uni degree through playing footy. And mm-hmm. um, uh, what degree did you get? I did a bachelor of business. Oh, nice. Yeah. So and then obviously I'm doing mortgage broken. I still have a job with the Dragons, um, doing some stuff there with the corporate stuff. But yep. um, I honestly don't know. I, I couldn't tell you what I would have been if I'd been in Port Macquarie. No, oh, no, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, um, I never really thought about it that far in depth. Yeah, no, honestly, that's fair. It's just a question I like to ask players who've retired. And it's like, what you know, what sort of job do you reckon you would have had? Craig Gower was like, no, nah, 
was never an option to not play footy. You know, I was as a kid, I was always going to play rugby league. So I, there's some that are dead set. There was never going to be like, there's no two ways about it. But some of them, you know, it's like I have no idea. Um, yeah. Honestly, that about wraps up the gym wag. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any more questions. Um, well, actually, is there anything, any advice that you'd like to give any youngsters who are, you know, aspiring to make it in the big leagues one day? Mate, the main thing for me, like I, I wasn't, like I mentioned, I know I was never the most talented player, but I feel like I got the best out of my body, and um, that was through being persistent, um, working hard, uh, making sure you know I was fit to play every week you know, by looking after my body. Obviously, enjoyed a good time, but still uh, did as much as I could to keep the body in check. So, just being persistent, and that's obviously a skill which, no matter what you do in life, is going to hold you in good stead because. If you've got that mentality, oh, shit, it's hard, I might, I might give up. Like, you just got to hang in there, keep working hard, and, you know, things will work out, whether that's, you know, in, in a corporate job, building by your builder or you, you, you want to be a professional sportsman, um, just giving yourself an opportunity. Yeah, and find those opportunities, like, literally as soon as you, like, don't let an opportunity sort of go to waste sort of thing. 100%. And that, that's even something I talk to my, my little boy who's six years old and yep. when we're doing stuff and he's like, oh, my legs are so I don't want to do it. I'm like, no, you, you've started it. Like, you've got to finish it. Exactly, um, yeah. And, and that, that's something I think you can learn from a young age or even with doing their homework. He's like, oh, I've had enough. I'm like, no, you've started it. You've got to finish it. Yeah, like, yeah. And just having that mentality to most of your things you, like you do in life. Yeah, and speaking of um, schooling and stuff, how did homeschooling go during COVID for you? <laughs> Hard. Yeah, it was. Um, I had my daughter. My daughter's four. She was home for about a week, then she got sent back to daycare because she was just <laughs> too full on. Oh, didn't wow. want to listen to anything I was telling them to do, and um, just distracted me, um, young fella. So once she went back to school, and she sprinted out the door when it was time. <laughs> so like, she was like, "Let me dad. out too." <laughs> yeah, she had enough. Like she's an active little girl and she's uh yep. she's not easily stimulated so um yeah that she was tough but my son was actually he, he, he was really good he, he he's a bit easier to handle than her and um you know he called me out on a few things and oh. ended up being right as well oh you yeah, learned he's a new, new one so. <laughs> yeah um and how was covid for you in general like regardless of the homeschooling and whatnot like how was the you could say because you retired at the end of last year. You know, you're, you're like, right, I'm getting into my routine because it's a lot of NRL players who retire love to find a routine. And that yeah. would have been thrown out the window when COVID hit. How was that for you? Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. So, like, obviously, the initial, initial retirement from rugby league, start to build a career, and then COVID happens. And, um, <laughs> you know, it was, it was tough, like, in terms of my work went really quiet. Um, but in, in the same sentence to that like uh, that allowed me to be able to homeschool my son and because my mm. wife she she has a very busy job so she was working at home but yeah um it allowed but me she to was help busy him though yeah yeah she she was flat sick so she was working downstairs and i'd be upstairs and trying to look after the young fella <laughs> but um mate, it was really good like i trained every morning and that like i, I still kept a bit of that routine mm-hmm. um obviously a, wasn't a sense of normalcy to- sort of thing and like through training in the morning, like you know, it, it makes you feel good. So that set me up for most of my days, and I had to, you know, have a look at the way I was doing a few things, even with building my mortgage broking business, and um, uh, I, I, it allowed me to, you know, step back, do that, then reach out to people, and now I've got some referral partners as well. So yep. yeah, it, it it was actually yeah, obviously not ideal, and through oh, some heavy me. spenders in the works, mm. as you know yourself. But yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, it definitely gives some perspective and uh, it does. allowed me to spend a lot of time with the family, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, well, I mean, because like honestly, as, as you were saying, yeah, um, you go from pretty much as soon like retiring to more or less full time work, you know, to get that routine. So it would have given you that little bit of a buffer of hey, I actually get to spend time with my family, and that I've more or less missed out a bit on, you know, since I like since still playing. So that would have been really good. Um, I guess last sort of question is looking back on your career, what do you reckon is your personal highlight of your career? Yeah, look, um, I, like, I get asked this question whenever Probably, I do yeah, podcasts or yeah. by a lot of people. Yeah, no, 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 but it's, you, I'd, I'd say me, um, definitely my debut, obviously. I, I didn't debut until I was 23 and I, I worked That's so hard debut. to get there. So, yeah, it was, yeah, and I worked so hard to get there and um, having everyone there for me debut, like a lot of the boys come down from Port with mum and dad and my wife and 
it was um you know it was really special and then you know playing in finals games that that's the best like i never actually got to play in a grand final or win a grand final other than reserve grade so yeah. that that was something i always wanted to do but you know the playing in prelim finals and you know you're playing in front of 40 50 000 people that that's one hell of a buzz and um then also the anzac day games that they're, they're uh, the best and I, I was lucky enough to win two of the three I played in. I was going to say, yeah, with the um, Anzac Day, I'm thinking of questions all the time, sorry. Um, <laughs> with the Anzac Day games, um, was it a similar or same intensity as a final game? Or was it yeah. Or was it the same intensity but in a different way? Yeah, it's um, de- definitely like a finals game. It's um, It was crazy, yeah. You, you obviously got the emotion of Anzac Day and, you know, the people who fought for what we have today and... Um, you know, the, the SFS is rocking. It's oh. built to the brim and oh, there's a bit of a rivalry there between the two football clubs. Oh, there so, is, yeah. Yeah, it, it was special. And then the, the first one I played in 2012, it's like one of the most well-known ones where Ben Hunt scored on uh, – ben, ben Cray scored on the buzzer. Yep. And um, we are behind by about eight points with about five minutes to go. So that that was emotional. And then 2018, um, we beat them as well. And it, it, that, that was when we were humming and – yeah, that, that was, that was the year that that was such a good run of form for the Dragons in 2018. I know, I know. It's and that's definitely a what if season, you know. It, it is. We, it we is. Didn't lose. Get, like, get, like, go up, put fifty on the Broncos. Gareth pops his shoulder, obviously, and lose Tarek at halftime in that game against the Rabbitohs. When he broke his leg at training, you know, for them pet players are there. We beat okay. the Roosters that year, so you sort of take. Honestly, I, I I reckon definitely 2018. If yeah, the if um Vaughn hadn't popped his leg, if um Gareth hadn't have popped his like um, then honestly, Dragons grand finalists at least that year. Yeah, I I just felt like yeah, we, we, we you had we that winning mentality as well. Yeah, but we just yeah we fell apart through the middle part of the year, which is fine because we got the wheels back on in the finals. Yeah, but yeah. we're just missing some of them key personnel players who had played in big games and would you know really helped in, in that environment when we're playing Rabbitohs and we're going field goal for field goal with uh, Adam Reynolds. But um, <laughs> anyway, that's never fun. <laughs> no, nah, he he's, uh, he got the clutch team definitely. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, Honestly, I don't think I can think of any more questions at the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do is wrap it up. Um, but yeah, so first of all, thank you very much for joining us. And I will definitely, first of all, send you the links when the episode's done, um, you know, and uploaded. And yeah, it, at some point at the end of the NRL season, I'll get you on for maybe a Sharks season recap or a Dragon season recap, probably Dragons. But is, yeah. is that all good with you? Yeah, no dramas, but yes. too good. Too easy. I take it easy. And thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good one. Bye. Bye.